In the background, you can see a solid red marketplace. In other words, the market is very, very big board red. We've got this idea that the market should be only sold as an intern. Well, that means that there's a very good chance there might be a passive commercial coming out on a regular basis. That passive commercial might only be a profit taker because the market's dropping, of course. So when we see this as a developing story, this is a great example because we can start to see the commercial buyer showing up here. Now, we don't know if that commercial buyer is a profit taker or a net long. We have got no way of verifying if that commercial buyer is a profit taker or a new net long position. At that stage there, the commercial buyer hasn't bought it because the price is going down. So as a retail trader, you've got no opportunity to buy this. None. So this is a better sell than a buy opportunity. And until the commercial comes in and buys it, now you've got a possible price level that you can work into as a possible buy trade. And if you waited for that passive buy trade, you obviously made yourself some nice money. When we get a commercial seller coming in here at a lower price, well, we know that's not a commercial profit taker because it's at a lower price. In other words, this is a commercial seller at lower prices. This is a commercial seller adding perhaps on the basis that they just took profits at this price, they just took profits in there, and now they've added back into their short trade here. There should be no commercial sellers at lower prices. Commercial buyers at lower prices is the norm not commercial sellers. So when we see a commercial seller at lower prices, do you see the difference in quality of these two signals? If you're looking at your trade log, of course, it just says dispersion buy and a dispersion sell coming. Knowledge is what makes the two trades different. A dispersion buy trade on a sell side market is something that I'm not going to do very much with. I'm going to wait for a buyer to show up. It might take me a half an hour, in which case there might be new signals. I'm not going to join in. I'm going to be leaving it alone. I'm going to wait for something better to show up, wait for that commercial to appear, and then decide if I fancy buying it, because at the end of the day, it's still against the underlying trend. It could still be a profit take. So I've got to be very careful when I get a buy signal in a sell side market. But on when a sell trigger in a sell side market. I've got no such qualms about getting involved. I've got no challenges about joining the sell on the way back down towards the bottom edges. And on that basis, this is the trade of the day right there. This one right here. And this trade made $1,200 almost as a straight line swing short sell. The exciting thing, of course, was that anybody that was following the trade log last night would have seen that sell opportunity. That was on your trade log last night as a dispersion sell. NASDAQ dispersion sell. And obviously the sell that came in at that price was worth 1200 bucks. Straight line profit into the closing bell. No drawdown, no problems. Big drawdown, lots of problems, because you don't understand the commercial operator. This is what I asked this morning in class, and I says, you know, if you see that buy trade, does everybody now start to understand how to deal? And the feeling was that people still haven't got a clue. They still have this, I'm not terribly sure. I'm not terribly sure, you know, I need to make sure I know and understand the concept of the RGLs. I need to know and understand the concept that a commercial buy is not a buy trade. A commercial buy is a passive possible buy at lower prices, especially in a solid sell side market. A commercial sell 
in a sell side market. Well, if you haven't got the ability to draw RGLs, and you'll all be able to verify that you can now draw RGLs because they should all be on your current charts. If they're not, you're not going to know which one's which. Oh, I've got a sell in a sell market. I've got a buy in a sell market. Most of the buys will be in sell markets. Most of them. Because commercials buy in sell markets and they sell in buy markets. So most of these commercial trade log entries, the max entries will be different because the max entries are momentum, they are prop desk, they are HFT, HFT type entries. But the commercial trade log is a commercial trade log, not a prop desk trade log. We do have a couple of HFT signals there that should lean against those commercial trades. These are called uh, these are called volt triggers. The vo the uh, volt triggers are you know based around volatility. We've obviously got the uh, the other triggers which are HFT buy and sell triggers. We've got the max buy and sell programs. These are all momentum trades that should be sold and bought as the price moves in that direction, not a fade trade, of course. So when we start seeing the good stuff. When we start reading the good stuff and we start making sense of the good stuff, the trade log has value. Prior to that, the trade log has no value. If I wanted to make the most money out of the trade log, guess what I would do without knowing and understanding? If it said bid watch, I would be a seller. And if it said offer watch, I'd be a buyer. That's it. That's how I'd make most money. That's how I'd make most money. Simply, if it said bid watch, I'd sell it. As soon as I saw it, I'd sell it. As soon as I saw a bid watch, short, sure, sell me. Because what it means is that there's value building for the commercial, which means that the value is coming from the price itself. The opportunity is to then fit that into the, uh, the uh, narrative. So when you saw a bid watch here in a sell market, if I said to you, the best opportunity would be to sell it. You'd have made money on that drop, wouldn't you? You'd have been aware that the commercials will start buying it into bottom edges. And that's why you were able to get off that sell trade early. And because the market was selling here when I got an offer watch here, I wouldn't have been a buyer. I wouldn't have been a buyer because I'm in line with the underlying flow of the markets. I would have been a seller. See the difference? Bid watch, sell, offer watch, sell. Bid watch, sell until a buyer comes in and then start looking for that opportunity to buy into that phase. When you get that opportunity to buy into that phase, you get a nice buy side reversal swing. Stunning, stunningly beautiful, stunningly easy when you see these types of trade outcomes. We are not far off. Cash open, guys.